stressed out, too much to do, the to-do list never ends. I know you hear me. You feel me. Internships could be the answer. Today, we're going to talk about creating the best foundation, the optimal parameters for creating your internship to get the most out of it, to help you, to help your district, and to help your students. And here we go. Be sure to visit soundmind.app, peachjar.com, and nickelstrategies.com. Advocating for public education, sharing our stories, and celebrating our schools, students, and staff. From crisis communications to media relations, social media, and everything in between, we're here to give you the best strategies, tools, and techniques to help you help others. Welcome to the School PR Podcast, brought to you by Peach Jar, Sound Mind, and Nickel Strategies. Here's your hosts, Matthew Jennings and Ryan Ferran. All right, welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Just me today, Matthew, giving clearance for the day off. Talking about setting up internships, what I'm about to play in a second is from our National Communications Internship Collab. About 180 people now from all over the country have been doing this for about a year or so. Basically, we meet, we have basically seminars, talk, connect, network, a lot of people that have internships, but many more that don't, but are interested in creating internships. I've been doing mine for about eight years, and so it's really key when you set up your internship that you kind of understand the different ways you can do it and the most efficient ways and why some people may have an idea in your organization how to do it, but I'm going to explain in this some of the best things to consider and if you have kind of options, what may be some of the best options and things that you want to factor in before creating it because once you create it, in a certain way, you may be stuck and it may not be optimal for you. So that's what I want to talk about in this. And that's what I talk about in this meeting. If you're thinking about an internship, it's been amazing. The content we produce, working with the students is so fun. We're doing projects we can never do by ourselves. Thanks to the student interns, we have over we have over 20-something interns. We're a little bit, um, we're pretty big, but we've been doing it a long time. We've created a whole system. But really... Once you create it, um, it, it's kind of hard to mold it. So I think the first step, getting that right, is so key. So that's what I go over in this internship collab meeting that we just had. And I think it will benefit people as they think about the different formats and ways to do it. Because there are a lot of different ways. But I share my suggestions in certain factors and parameters that you may have to work with, why I think these are ideal and things to consider. Check out our sponsors, Nickel Strategies. If you need some help with your PR workload, which we all have, check them out. They have a bunch of case studies on the website. They'll give you a call, let you know what they can do, help you. NickelStrategies.com. Check out SoundMind.app. Amazing things they're doing on their website and their app for sleep, meditation, just relaxing, reading. You can adjust things. It's really cool. Soundmind.app. And of course, Peach Jar, Matthew and the crew will hook you up. You want to streamline your communications, your flyers and your district. They're doing a lot of things and they keep evolving. They're getting better and better. So peachjar.com really will help you streamline your communications in your district. Go digital and all that sort of thing. So check them out. If you're interested in joining the National Collab, there'll be a link in this description. If it's not there yet, check out a previous episode where there will be a link in there to join. You're more than welcome. It's free. There's no charge. We're just kind of helping each other create internships and better ourselves and kind of do some PD talk in this meeting. This What you're going to hear is probably only a half hour. We broke into small groups, which is really fun. We got to know each other a little bit better got to do some bonding and networking a little bit more uh, intimately, which was really cool. And we meet just through, obviously, Google Meet virtually. Uh, So we'd love to have you if you're considering an internship. So hope you find this valuable. 
All right, welcome. This is the National Communications Internship Collab. Great to see so many people. We actually now have over, I think it's 177 people in the group total that have signed up. So it's kind of exciting. People from all over the country, as you can tell. Um, I'm Ryan Ferran, started the group and started maybe over a year ago. A lot of you have internships, many of you don't, but are looking for ideas and inspirations, how to start it, different formats. And so that's kind of why I started the group because I think it's a growing trend. Uh, a lot of us are running out of money in our states, our budgets are declined, we're all overworked. So uh, how do you get all that great stories and that work out there? Uh, we've been doing an internship in Arcadia for about eight years now, maybe going on nine. And it's just been a great model. It's changed over the years from how many students we've had, how we've done it, leadership roles. I won't go too deep into how we set up our program. Uh, I'll have some links we'll share from the previous, previous presentations. You can kind of get into all the details if you want. But I think setting up the internship is so important, laying that foundation. So I just want to talk about how we do it here and why. and when I had Robert on, he he has a college internship uh, with college kids, but he also doesn't have high school students. So it makes perfect sense for him to do it that way. And he's got a really good program. We'll share, share that link as well. Kate uh, was on last year. She has it run through CTE and a paid internship. Uh, and I like her model, especially how she works with local businesses and communities. And she has those partnerships, which uh, to be honest, I haven't really thought about it at that level. So she's uh, really created some great partnerships and 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 helped pay for some of that and just has some great ideas. So I would check out that recording too. We'll drop all those links in there. Um, <clears throat> but if you have your own students, uh, your own high school, and uh, you, you can do it in a certain way, um that's kind of what i'm i'm recommending and then you may have the pressure of your superintendent or the board saying no we we have to, or your state may you may have to pay interns or they want to run it through cte or you may have a pathway that you need to have a capstone for so it all makes sense so there's no judgment there's many different ways to do it but i'll kind of explain the positives and maybe the challenges of some ways if you hear somebody has an idea no let's do this you can kind of explain, well, there's some crazy guy in California that's been doing it for years that would recommend this way over that way. And here's some of the potential pitfalls. So our internship in Arcadia, and we're in Los Angeles County out in California, we're about 9,000 students. Um, we have we have a, a distinct advantage, I'll be honest. We have one high school, one comprehensive high school. So it's easier for us. I was just talking to Heather. She's They have a lot of high schools out there. I always recommend if you have multiple high schools, pilot it at one, get it going, and then expand. Because if you if you wanna do it at four or five to be equitable, that makes sense, but that's gonna prevent, that's gonna provide a lot of challenges going ahead. So I always say pilot it at one, if it works, we'll grow it and we'll slowly expand it and get going. So ours is non-paid, we use our own high school students and it's basically run as an after school club, um, an extracurricular kind of group sports team we run it just like that so some of the advantages of running it after school club is the flexibility we can have our meetings we meet once a week and then we run everything else through a facebook group so we can pick any day of the week the kids don't have to sacrifice a class are they going to take this class or another class they don't have to choose um, and they're more likely going to really want to be in it in the internship uh, be passionate about it uh there's no grading in it you don't need a credential teacher um you'll be running it nine out of ten times anyway and you want that direct connection with them and then the kids that are you know maybe just doing it for credit or a grade may not be so interested they may be in the back of the class but for us if they're kind of not they don't have the time commitment they don't have the passion we have a probationary period and we just kind of say like look when you have more time come back so everyone in there that's doing it is really passionate about it they're involved they're participating um, as opposed to if you're doing it in a class they may kind of like i'm just going to get my c and move on with it and you're putting in a ton of time and work and do you really want it that level um, of commitment in your program probably not 
Um, we use our own students. Whenever you can use your own students, if you have high school students, I highly recommend using your own students. You're giving them such an opportunity. You're teaching them, you're mentoring them, and they know the school. A, they know where it's at. They know the teachers. They know the students. They know the stories at the school. So it's way easier as far as training. So if you're using college interns that have never been on your campus, Robert can tell you you're, the training level is way more. They got to know where the school is, who's the principal, what clubs do you have, what teams do you have, what are some of the stories, the issues, the challenges. So the training level is just quadruple what it would be as if you use your own students who they have school spirit, they're passionate, and they want to help their own school and their own community. So we found using your own students, if you have high school students, amazing. I might even consider middle school students a little bit. We're kind of thinking about tweaking going to the middle school because there's some good kids. We have broadcast programs at a lot of our middle school, some new school newspapers, and those are the kind of students that would be perfect for an internship. But it really provides value to your own students. And then you as the person running the comms department or in it, think how much value you're providing to your students. You talk about, you know, trying to do recruitment for student enrollment, attracting teachers, like you're providing a whole nother CTE program internship pathway that didn't exist before you and you're providing that so that's a great value that you're adding to your own students in your own district um, the other thing that we do too is some will do we only take juniors and seniors I we totally disagree with that take freshmen take sophomores take every year the one year we actually shy away from taking the most actually is seniors because by the time you train them and get them up to speed at the first semester, second semester, it's senioritis big time. So you may get a month or two out of seniors. So have we taken them? Yes. Um, we actually took one last year and they're not kind of cutting it and they're not gonna be continuing with us. So freshmen, sophomore and juniors are the best. We've had several students start as freshmen, continue with us till their senior year, four years of, with somebody. Amber and I can't make a meeting. We have them run the meeting. It goes seamlessly. So their experience, they get the routines. In our program, because we're so developed and so far along, and we have 23, 24 interns now, we have a mentorship program built in. So the kids that have been in our program for a year or two, when we get new students, they mentor them. So during that probationary period, they have mentors to check in with, ask questions to, to help them. And we basically tell our students, if you're failing and you're not getting through probation, it's your mentor's fault. Like it's on your mentor to drag you through and get you through, teach you everything. So starting them as freshmen, it's just such a big advantage. By the time they're sophomore, junior, seniors, they're the leaders in the group, they're, they're running everything. So that's been really helpful. Another thing that I know we've all dealt with is all the social media rumors, social media threats, um, and the rumorville at the high schools. So when we have one of those issues, we'll go to our students and be like, what are you guys hearing? And we have 20 something students will be like, well, I know it may have started from here or no, we haven't really heard about that. You know, we may get parent calls, but the students aren't worried about it. Uh, via social media or whatever it is. So it's actually a great connection that we have with our students to have those kind of on, honest conversations or those, you know, the social media challenges and all those crazy things that we love dealing with. Um, so that's another advantage um, besides the fact that it's super fun working with the students, but we highly recommend uh, working with your own students. We also do uh, applications and interviews as a part of the process. And this really kind of separates those who really want to be in it, that are going to work hard, that want involvement, to those that are just kind of looking for something maybe for their college app, resume builder. And then that exclusivity and that kind of the prestige of getting in, going through the application process really kind of uh, promotes the program. It gives it just that little bit extra where, you know, you can't just get into this club. You have to kind of earn it, take some classes, do some research. Um, so we get kids that really want it. Um, and even some of the best lessons that we've given our students are students that that didn't get in or 
probation they didn't make it past because it's the first time they've ever done an application it's the first time they've ever done like a full panel interview and at least they get that experience so the next time they they do it um they just have that experience of having done it before going through the process and then once they're in we go over their <clears throat> applications what to do what not to do how to make it better interviews how to improve your uh skill set with interviews we used to ask the question you know tell us you know one thing uh kind of a positive trait and a negative trait that you're working on they would quickly mention one positive trait and give me like 19 negatives like oh i'm working on this they're like no like just <laughs> so we really help them as far as whether they're going to continue in this field or another how to do those applications and interviews and then it helps with that kind of oh wow i got in dci and they're they're more proud of just like oh, i just walked in this club they needed they were passing out donuts they needed more students for the club paid versus non-paid i'm also a big proponent of non-paid first of all it's public funds that we're all using so you got to be careful how you're spending your money you may have pots of money and um need to spend it on something so no judgment there there's a lot of successful paid internships again i think kate's getting some community partners which is helping which is great um but if you have the option of paid or not paid or you're kind of discussing it amongst leadership i would go non-paid every day of the week um a i've never had one student ask for payment we try to give them all the benefits of the world um we, write them letters of rec, we do food, we do luncheons and, and stuff like that. They get press passes. Um, but you can do so much more with a non-paid. We can we have 23 interns. If we were paying, we might have three or four. Their hours are going to be limited. Um, and then again, you're adding so much value to your department uh, as far as what you're bringing in, the, the output, the productivity. Um, and it's not coming at a cost. And non-paid is sustainable. I don't know about you guys and what your states are in, but California, our budget is not looking good for the future. So, you know, you don't want to bring kids in and have to cut it down because your budget just got cut. So non-paid is kind of the way I like to do it. Um, and then the, if you are paid, you may have that, you know, what's their motivation? Are they just looking for a part-time job or do they do want to be here? Do they want to learn? Do they want to kind of help out? So non-paid has been great for us. Again, there are successful paid programs that it works out perfect for them. They have the funding. Um, other last thing I want to touch on before I have Amber kind of chime in and on what we do and why we do it is um, sometimes people will ask, okay, now I have the internship set up. What do I have them do? And so if you ask that question, you actually may not need an internship. When I first got here, I had a long list of things that I wanted them to do. I was a one man shop and I'm like, man, there's so many, and I'm a former news reporter. So I see everything through the story of a lens and a great story. So I walk on a school campus, I see a story there. I see a great program there. I see stories all over the place. So for me, there's never been a shortage of what do I have them to do, but I understand the question. Um, so whatever your focus is, or maybe your your low hanging fruit. I would have them start with that. Like, oh, we're working on. We need to promote our CTE pathways, and I would have them start writing stories about those, doing some videos, uh, just covering those events through photography. Um, but if if you're like, I got these interns, I don't know what they're going to do. You may not need an internship program. And then if you get stuck, you've been going for a couple of years. We always ask the students like. What are the issues you're facing? What's going on? Um, and it's, you know, there's always something about mental health. They're not sure like who to go to. And so they're like, all right, we can do a story about here's all the mental health resources in the district, in the county. So we asked them, hey, what, are, what are you passionate about? We started doing a podcast a few years ago uh, that was just a student-led internship podcast. And we started it more district focused, doing our stories. And it never, to be honest, it never really grew a ton of traction. We got some listeners, but it wasn't huge. So we turned that into do whatever you guys want with the podcast. You're still going to learn. You're still producing. You're doing audio. Uh, you're writing. You're learning how to coordinate this. But they, they are doing, speaking of Taylor Swift, they did like a Taylor Swift album review. They're doing pop culture stuff. So it's like, you know, just have fun with it. So not everything needs to be like a direct benefit to the district itself. You're just giving back to the students and having them experience and they love doing podcasts. It's a different format. You can get on, you can chat longer, uh, have your friends on, talk about the big game or whatever you want. So 
we kind of shift that way to make it fun for them. So not everything seems like a work assignment. Um, so that's kind of the our basic format of how we do it and why we do it and some of the challenges um, that that you may face doing it in, in another way. Um, if you guys have questions, you can pop them in the chat. But Amber, anything uh, you want to kind of add to that and the way we do it? Um, I think you really sum summarize it up pretty nicely. Uh, I've been with the program for seven years now, and I think just starting small is so key. When I started here, Ryan, uh, we just really wanted to give a bunch of kids opportunities. So when I started, he had 42 interns in the program. And I was like, how do you keep track of all these students? And I, I quickly found that maybe of those 42, there were a solid 20 that were chiming into our um, Facebook group and submitting work for us to review, things like that. So I think really just starting small, like if I were to branch off and go into my own district, having served in this internship now, I would reach out to maybe some of your, you know, newspaper teachers at your high school. Um, if you have like a broadcast news program there and see if you could get some students that you already know are interested in um, doing this type of work and can hit the ground running. But yeah, starting small is key because once you train those students, then they can help you onboard and train new students like Ryan was saying. So and I think what's just it's honestly been the best part of my job is just being able to know it's a win win situation we're sharing all of the things that we know about not only communications and PR, but just professionalism and how to brand and market yourself. Interestingly, we did a go around, usually at the beginning of our meetings, uh, we meet once a week, we do a check-in and we'll just have a fun question or a bonding question. And we had found out through some one-on-one -on -one meetings we had with our interns that a lot of students aren't even interested in going into communications and PR, but the work that they do for us is amazing because this is a hobby for them or just a side passion for them. So um, you'll come to find that you don't even need students that necessarily want to do this for the long haul. But the benefits that they gain, again, are that professional work experience. Um, they learn how to market and brand themselves. So they've got themselves on LinkedIn. They're learning how to network through us. They're learning how to interview and talk to people. So um, that's the other benefit of working with students in your district because you know you're just continuing to give back um, to students that are coming up through your school system. But yeah, it's a, it's a great, fun program. We could talk about it for hours too, so never hesitate to reach out. Yeah, thank you, Amber. Uh, great points in there. Jim asked kind of the golden question, and this is the question that prevents everyone from doing it. They like the idea, but they're already working 60 hours a week and like, do I have time to run an internship program? So this is a great question, Jim. And this is the problem we first faced before, and Amber did a great job. I, I started it, she got here. And so I was spending a lot of time because I was proofing all the articles. I was critiquing all the videos. But once we got to a point where we got 16, 20 interns, then we created a leadership structure. So now we have student managers. So I have a student manager, for the news writing team, for the video team. So instead of me getting every first draft of everything, it goes to those student managers who have been in our program for a while and they can copy edit. So in instead of us spending 20 minutes copy editing something, we're spending two minutes just polishing it up after somebody else has seen it. Same thing with video. So our video manager, they go through the critique with it. We never see it. They're improving it. So by the time it gets to us, we'll watch it once, send them a couple notes. And then, um, so our time commitment has dropped significantly, but that is a challenge. And that's why this conversation about setting it up is so important. What Amber said is key to start small. Don't go crazy. Don't. And even though I got up to 40, I started with one student. And now I recommend start with two, just so they have the buddy system and they're in it together, two or three. That's perfect. Two or three kids to manage is awesome. Another reason we do the applications and the interviews, because you want kids that can work in a group together, but independently. So I don't care what you guys are doing, what games you're covering, if you're working on our magazine or whatever, you can do it when you want. So I can't, we're busy, you know, nine to five, we're pretty busy. So we can't be answering all these questions. So I need kind of independent people. 
So that's why we do the applications and we kind of pick like, ooh, this person. The other question we get, which is a good one, is like, where do you get these students from? Like, I don't, I'm kind of new to the district or I'm, I'm not too connected to our high school. Um, talk to your, your video production teachers, talk to your newspaper teachers, talk to those photography teachers, say, hey, I'm starting an internship. I'm looking for a few kids. Do you have anyone you would recommend? And they'll give you two names off the bat, like, oh, this kid is great. He's always asking for more stuff. He really is a great photographer. Um, so ask for recommendations from your teachers, and you can kind of start that way. You can go to the classes, you know, hey, give me five minutes at the beginning of your class. I'm going to talk to them about the internship program. Uh, but But that helps a lot. And you'll find that you have, we have students that are way better photographers than I'll ever be. They have some, some kids are really good at video animation and doing stuff like that. So that's another reason to use your students. A lot of these kids have blogs, they're photographers, they're doing this work, great graphic designers we've had over the past, and they're in your schools and you don't know it yet. And they produce a lot of great work. But the time commitment one is kind of what prevents, everyone's like, this is a great idea. But I don't have another five hours a week to do. So that's why I start small, structure it, um, and work with, you know, kind of higher level kids. That's why if you do it as a class, you're like, man, now I'm putting in time. And now, you know, I'm not getting the most output out of this time. Like, is it worth it? So when you set it up at kind of like an after school club, you have that flexibility and your time is kind of more valuable and you're not spending so much um, doing it. You're not grading anything. So that that's a, a recommendation for sure. Any other questions before we hop into small groups? Or if anyone has experience kind of recently setting theirs up? All right. I would attempt to throw us into some small groups. And this way we can kind of, you know, talk amongst ourselves. You can just introduce yourself, where you're from. Do you have an internship? Do you not? If you do, what's your format? If you're not, kind of what format are you thinking? And we'll just meet for like 10 minutes and we'll come back out to the larger, larger group.